OK, so we're going to start the meeting. Are we OK to go ahead? Yes, yeah, so we're now live. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Um, the first item on the agenda is apologies. Um, I think we're going to do it slightly differently now in the sense that I'm going to, you or I, Katie, will ask which members are present. So we will get confirmation that all members are, are there or not. So can you just all each, can you each one confirm that you are there? Councillor Carter. Sorry, uh, sorry, Chairman, trouble unmuting myself. Yes, I am here. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Mark Cooper. I'm, I'm here. Yeah. Rod Cooper. Yes, I'm here. Uh, Dibs, not here. Frankham. Present. Gibson. Yes. Has. Present. Hughes. Here. Irish. Present. McAvoy. Here. Yeah. Penman. Present. Bill Pott. Yes, good morning, Peter. I'm here. M morning. Price, I know you're here, Roger. Yeah, yes, I'm here. And Councillor, and Councillor Warwick. Yes, I'm here, Peter. So those are the people who are present. The only absentee is Councillor Dibbs. And I think, Pal Hare, you are substituting for him today and you are here. Yes, Correct. Peter, I'm here. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you, Pal. You've got me as well, Lance Crunch. Oh, we said I missed you. I missed you, Lance. Sorry. I've, I've missed you too. <laughs> right. So uh, we are all here. So that's apologies dealt with. Declarations of interest. We normally deal with those when the item comes up. Uh, but does anybody want to disclose anything now? I would take that nobody does. So we move on to item. Yes, sorry, 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 Chairman. Just to, uh, you, on the on the declarations of interest. Just I have previously notified. Yes, you have. On item uh, seven. seven. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I know. I know that. Uh, so item number three minutes of the previous meeting held, I think, on the 18th of March, a long time ago. Uh, not many were there at that meeting. Uh, are they a correct record of what happened at that meeting? Uh, I assume that you all agree that they are, unless you, anyone wishes to speak. Peter, I'm no, there, I formally proposed. Sorry? I'd formally propose them if you want to propose it. If you like, yeah, you propose that they are a correct record. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Right. So Second, the minutes, you, sir, if you like. Thank you. So I'm assuming that they are now agreed by the committee. Moving item swiftly to item number four, deputations. We have two deputations on the uh, Fry and Junior School application, and we have one deputation on the Gosport School. Uh, they are both in support of the applications. We'll deal with those when we come to it. Uh, so moving on, Chairman's announcements. Can I just formally thank Marge Harvey for her contribution to the committee on the years that she has been on it. Uh, she's now gone on to become Deputy Chairman and congratulations to her for that. Can I also welcome um, Councillor Gibson, Andrew Gibson, to this committee. Andrew, I'm delighted that you're on the committee. You will add some, a lot of experience to it, and I look forward to working with you, Andrew. Um, so let's move on now to the item number six, which is Fryan Junior School application. If that could perhaps come up on the screen. And I think, Chris, you're going to introduce this item today, aren't you? Where's you? Yes, I, I, I'm going to introduce yeah, the item okay, today, Chris. Chairman. Yeah, so, fine. Um, apologies, members. We um, we don't have Judith with us today. She's un unfortunately um, not well. Um, so I'll take you through the the, the presentation. 
Um, this is an application for a uh, demolition of the existing uh, junior school at, at Fyern uh, Junior School and the construction of a new single storey um, school to replace it. Um, I'll just take you to the, the site plan. We have the, um, the existing school and you'll see that the site is shared with the infant school. Uh, and members, I'm, I'm assuming you're all uh, seeing this as I've not got any uh, contrary um, comments made. Um, the red line shows the, shows the application site, which is around the, the junior school element. Um, the infant school uh, is, a, is immediately adjacent. Um, just to point out on, on this plan, the, um, there is one vehicular entrance to, to the site that's uh, shared by both schools from uh, Oakmont Road. Uh, that stays unchanged in the planning application. Um, so in the centre, we've got the school site. Um, off to the west, we have the Fryan Recreation Ground. To the east is the Fernhill Residential Home. Uh, and adjacent to that is another area of, of uh, playing pitches, open space. And just a bit further beyond to the east, you'll see just in the bottom corner of the, of the plan there, uh, is the M3, so that's, that gives you your bearings. You can see it's very much in a, in a residential area. And if we just, sorry, if I um, put this on slideshow, apologies for that, members. Um, we're now at the, uh, the aerial photograph. Uh, and again, that just gives you your, your, your bearings in terms of the surroundings. You can see the adjacent infant school and you can quite clearly here see the, the, the complex of buildings that, that form the junior school um, and you can very much see the, the extent of the open space that's, uh, that's around the school, the, around the school site. Um, so the layout, um, you can see from this um, plan, um, the new school footprint and I hope you can just make out in the red line of the existing school footprint. Uh, in red, um, you'll see immediately that the new school will be situated a bit further back into the site uh, compared to, to the existing, but still away from the uh, playing pitch um, at, the, at the rear of the site. So that remains um, unchanged as, as part of the proposal. You see again the, the vehicle access from Oakmont Road, and there are two uh, additional uh, pedestrian accesses only from the footpath that runs um, along the, the side of the site um, on, on the sort of northern side. Elevations. Um, you can't make out a huge amount from these eleva elevations members, but you'll see at the top is the existing building and you'll, you'll note that it's predominantly um, a two-storey building. Um, at the bottom, you see the new elevations, which is single story with this higher element at one end, which is the, um, the, the new hall, um, which, uh, which is at one end of the, of the building. We'll see, the, we'll see the floor plan shortly. Um, the new building will be uh, brick, uh, brick elevations with, with curtain walling, um, with a lot of glazing, as you can see. Um, it's a fairly sleek and modern looking looking building. The existing structure is, is and you'll see from your report members, is uh, beyond its uh, useful life. It's a timber frame building that has got fairly lightweight panelling, not well insulated. Um, and the decision was taken that, that the building couldn't reasonably be refurbished, refurbished and, and has, to be, has to be replaced. Um, this is the, the elevation looking from the plane pitches, so the, the rear, if you like. And again, you'll see that the slightly higher um, element on, on, the, on the end of the building. Um, just moving through to the side elevations, looking uh, from, from the end of the building uh, and from the, the, the other end. Um, okay, moving to the, to the floor plan. Um, what you can see there is, is, the, is the footprint of the building, and it's a number of classrooms grouped around, around a central corridor. It's nine teaching classrooms. Um, you've got a, a, um, the main hall, as I've already mentioned at the end, 
which is a multi-purpose hall. You've got the library element um, and um, staff room, uh, offices, etc., and the kitchen that would be used for both schools, for both the junior and the infant school. Um, there are covered elements, um, covered sections or um, canopies to both sides of the building, both on the front elevation and the rear. And then there's a covered link to link the, the new building to the uh, existing infant school. So just looking at some uh, visuals now, perspective view, you can see the, uh, the new structure. You see it's set further back into the site uh, behind this uh, landscaped area. There's new tree planting both to the front and rear of the building. Uh, you can make out perhaps from this that there will be roof lights in the building to get light into the center of the building. Um, the car park at the front of the site stays larger as it is, but with some reconfiguration to help um, the segregation of vehicles and pedestrians, and also to add some additional car parking spaces, a few more spaces to bring it up to our full uh, standard and to provide for disabled uh, parking, etc. And this is a view from the plain pitch side of the of the building. Again, it shows quite clearly the the uh, the elevations. You can see lots of glazing, lots of light, but the canopy across the across the uh, the building to give shading where necessary. And you've got the, the the higher element at the end, which is where the where the hall is. Just quickly, some photographs. These uh, first two show the entrance from Oakmont Road. Um, between housing um, to get into the school. This is just a slight, the one on the right, a slightly closer up image looking down to uh, beyond the school gates. And just moving to the building itself, on the left you can see the existing school building to be demolished. That gives you a good idea of the sort of construction. Um, it's, uh, as I said, the timber framed, panelled, um, and not really uh, up to, to modern standards in terms of uh, insulation etc so um, ready as i said earlier ready for for replacement with something something better the photograph on the right just shows a view looking across the front of the existing school so on the left you've got school buildings to be demolished on the right of this photograph you've got the backs of the houses on oakmont uh, road and finally, just some views from the sort of plain pitch uh, side of things. Looking back at the school, you can see the, the, the two-story nature of the school. This is a closer up again, gives you a good idea of the, the type of structure we're talking about. Um, so moving on in terms of consultation and representation, representations, very little um, received uh, members. That all the consultees raised no objections, subject to uh, a number of conditions, which are set out for you in your recommendation. Um, no third party representations received in this case. So the key issues really um, are design and external appearance. And, and, and when I say design, I mean the, you know, the, the design in terms of the structure of the building and its sustainability. In those respects, I think it's very much a, a case of an improvement over what we have at the moment. Uh, the external elevations will be uh, will be improved, but so will the, uh, the, the structure throughout. It's single story as you see whereas the existing is two story uh, it's, it, it makes for a more efficient layout and although we we have a school building that will be single story only the footprint is actually less than, than the existing structures overall and allows plenty of space for um, uh, additional landscaping and and obviously as i've already mentioned the, the maintenance or retention of the existing car parking the relationship with adjacent uses remains wholly acceptable. The building is actually moved a bit further away from uh, the residential properties in Oakmount Road and the car parking relationship with those properties stays uh, much as it is now. The plane pitch will be retained, although there will be some um, disruption during construction, the plane pitch will, will be retained and will be fully reinstated. And the other play areas around um, the school building will be retained. And again, there's potential for improved spaces and, and improved landscaping as a result of that, already mentioned the parking uh, and access and the site um, sustainability. It, what we what we get is a building which will be certainly much more sustainable than, than the existing. It includes a number of measures to um, improve uh, insulation and uh, to to uh, minimise energy costs, etc. Um, and those are set out uh, for you 
in a bit more detail in your report and again the applicant uh, deputation can, can address those issues further if members have any questions on that. So uh, Chairman the recommendation as you'll see is for permission subject to the conditions that are set out in your appendix. There's only one minor change to those that's in your update paper just a, 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 a minor revision and simplification of the drainage uh, condition that, that's in there. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Chairman, your microphone is muted. Thank you for that, Chris. Uh, um, can we now move on to the deputies? I saw that uh, Councillor Gibson raised a question about PVC panels on the roof. Um, there are, if you look at paragraph 36 of the report, that is confirmed. So we move on now to the deputies. Uh, they, uh, the first deputy is, are for the applicant. Uh, they both have between them 10 minutes in total, and it's Michael Bates and Martin Hallam. And Katie, could you ring them up if they're not already online? Thank you, Chairman. They're here already, so they're ready okay. to go. Off you go. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so my name's Michael Bates. Um, I'm a project architect with a scheme. Um, I've fed a short uh, deputation to... Um, support uh, Chris Murray's uh, report as follows. Uh, so proposals to replace Ryan Junior School with a new building have developed because structural and condition assessment of the existing building has determined that it is not viable to refurbish it and that significant expense is required to maintain the building and prolong its use. The de development is to replace the existing building with a modern purpose-built school it does not seek to expand existing pupil numbers. Hampshire County Council Property Services have developed the proposals through consultation with Children's Services, the Federation of Fry and Infant and Junior School and the local community. The school has been consulted throughout the design process and their engagement has directly shaped the development of the proposals to ensure the best outcome for the school and the wider community. The layout of the car park has been adjusted to improve vehicular and pedestrian segregation and to provide additional parking spaces in line with Hampshire County Council's school parking guidelines. The landscape proposals seek to enhance the site's biodiversity by introducing a wildflower meadow area and planting trees and shrubs to enhance the building setting within the site. The proposed building has been positioned close to the existing infant school to allow movement between the two buildings via a proposed covered link supporting the federated management structure of the infant and juniors. <coughs> the proposed building is single storey rectangular form with a double height volume for the hall. The single storey arrangement provides good connections to external spaces throughout the building. Canopies have been introduced to shade glazing to the classrooms, reducing solar heat gain in the summer months. These also provide covered thresholds between the classrooms and external spaces. Roof lights have been positioned within the central parts of the plan to provide natural lights and ventilation throughout the building and reduce energy usage through artificial lighting. The building will be ventilated with a mix of natural ventilation through openable windows and mechanical ventilation with heat recovery. The building will be clad in high quality traditional brickwork. The brick is light and textured in appearance with chalky tones in the brick which make reference to the local downland context whilst remaining sympathetic to the adjacent infant school building. Window frames have been specified in a warm grey to complement the tone of the brick. The building has been designed with high levels of insulation and air tightness to limit heat loss and reduce the building's energy usage. Solar PV panels will be installed on the roof to provide renewable energy and reduce the building's operational cost. Infrastructure for electric charge points will also be installed to enable future installation uh, for EV charging. So to conclude, the proposed building and site strategy offers a significant upgrade to the existing provision and offers a long-term and sustainable education facility for Fine Junior School. Thank you.
So, Chairman, I think you're Mike. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we're moving over now to Councillor Gryaski, who's going to address the committee. Um, is she all, all lined up as well? I'm here. Oh. Yes. Welcome, yes. Judith. Uh, you'll know the rules, of course, that you have an unlimited time to speak on this item. Uh, but I know you'll be I know you'll be concise and to the point as you always are. So over right. to you. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to speak this morning, and it's uh, it's nice to be back on a visit. Um, I'm I'm very pleased to um, um, support this application. Um, you will have seen in the report, um, and we've heard um, from the officer that the current timber frame building is in need of full replacement, and that a refurbishment option would not be possible. Um, this has actually presented the school with welcome opportunities to rebuild a school that is really fit for the 21st century and 21st century teaching methods rather than the 1960s approach many of us will have been uh, familiar with. The modern design also ticks a lot of boxes in terms of energy efficiency, sustainability and environmental sensitivity. And the adjustments to the car park at the front of the school mentioned in paragraph 27 will, in my view, make the area much safer. Um, I'm, I'm pleased that the phased construction plan has been carefully uh, prepared to cause minimum disruption. Uh, you'll note that uh, the County Council has received no representations, in particular no objections to this application. And I believe that this is in no small part because of the extensive preparatory work by the estates team whose commitment to this project has been commendable. Um, I've attended several meetings at the school as the plan has developed, and it's been wonderful to see the close collaboration with the school leadership team, parents and pupils and the wider community, all focused on seizing this unique opportunity. I know that everyone is excited about this proposal, myself included, and I hope that you will approve the application today. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Judith. Uh, right, we now move on to members. Do you have any questions of the deputies? Um, Chairman, I have Councillor Gibson listed as wishing to speak. All right. Uh, Councillor Gibson, over to you. No, I didn't have anything to say, actually. I just okay. asked a question about the solar oh, cell. OK, Thanks. cheers, Andrew. So okay. I'm very happy with uh, OK, this, that's this good. Project. Thanks for that. A any other questions then of the deputies? Uh, I have a question, Mark Cooper. Mark, is your question to the deputies or to... Um, it's, it's, it's been answered by either Chris or by the deputies, Chairman, thank you. Yeah, very, very briefly, um, there's reference in the report to construction vehicles on site, which is fine. The thing that worries me a little bit with all of these applications uh, is it's in the middle of a residential area. Where do all the contractors and the staff and the subcontractors vans park during the construction process? And is there provision for them to park actually on the site during that process? Thanks, Mark. I, sus I suspect, suspect that question goes to one, to the deputy um, who may be able to assist. So, um, Michael Bates speaking. I'm, I'm happy to answer that question. Um, the, uh, the contractor's compound uh, well, firstly, uh, vehicular access for the contractor is separate to the school's access points with, with temporary access provided from Cumberland Avenue. Uh, and the contractor's compound makes provision for the subcontractors parking off of the street within their compound. OK, thank you. Right. So do we have any member who wishes to raise any further questions of the deputies? I take it that there are not. Do we wish to now go into debate? Does anyone wish to debate the item? If not, then I think we can 
in essence, what we've got here is an application to uh, partially uh, to demolish a school built in 1963, which effectively is past its sell-by date, and to erect between now and the next year for opening, I believe, in September 2021, a new school, um, better design, better sustainability, um, all in all, an excellent new school. So can we go to the recommendation? And I will... And Chairman? The yes? Sorry yes. to interrupt. I just wanted to double check. Are there any questions of the officers before we go to the, to the, I to the vote? I, I think I did ask that, but I don't think there are questions of, of, of the officers. So the recommendation is that planning permission be granted subject to the conditions listed in Appendix A, subject to the amendment contained in the updated report. Katie, over to you now with regard to the vote. Okay, thank you. So members, this um, vote is going to just be done verbally. So if I could confirm whether there are any members who want to abstain from this um, decision. Uh, excuse me, uh, apologies, uh, Katie, with your permission, Chair, may I just remind yep. uh, members that you uh, will have needed to have been present. Um, uh, what that means in this time is you need to have been had a good connection and been able to listen to the debate uh, and the item presented in full. Um, if you've not been able to do so, uh, please can you enter an abstention when you come to vote. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that, James. Thank you, James. Okay, okay, thank you, members. So are, are there any um, abstentions on this item? Okay, I'll take that. Are there any members that wish to vote against the application? Okay, so I conclude that um, all members are in favour of this, um, of the recommendations. Confirm. Can you all, yeah. yeah, so if we can just get a, a general um, hubbub of agreed. agreed. Brilliant. Thank you very much. So that's Agreed. 16 in favour. Thank you. Right. Well, that was easy. Um, so let's move on now to agenda item seven, um, which is almost a rerun of item number six in many ways. Um, I think uh, it's at this stage that Councillor Philpot, you want to declare an interest. So. Uh, do you I, want I shall do I, I shall do that and leave the meeting, Chairman. Okay, so you're going to go and make a cup of coffee, yeah? What a good idea! I'll make yeah. one for you too. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right over to you. So this is for again of the re for the con uh, construction of a new school at um, Grange Junior School, um, which is school which was built, I think, in 1962. Similar. Timber frame construction uh, passed its sell by date, and the application is for a new school. And I think Amy Dales is going to present this item to the committee. Over I, to you, Amy. I am indeed. Thank you, Councillor Latham. Um, good morning, members. Uh, I'm Amy Dales. For any of you who haven't uh, met me before, uh, this is my first time presenting at committee, so uh, please bear with me. <laughs> Let me just share my screen with you all. Okay, so as uh, the Chairman has already stated, uh, this is an application for, uh, very similar to Fryan, a single storey junior school uh, with demolition of the existing school, including landscaping, hard play area, improved pedestrian and vehicular access uh, and additional parking um, at Grand Grange County Junior School in Gosport. Um, and as Chris has already stated, this uh, is also uh, a timber frame building from the 60s, which is, is no longer considered fit for purpose. Um, so here we've just got the location plan, um, which you'll see here. This is the existing junior school building. Um, and like Fryan, it's got the infant school building next door. Um, and then this uh, little black box here is where the new uh, school building is proposed to be placed. Um, 
here we've got an aerial photograph which just shows you a little bit better this area of hard standing is it forms most of the base of the footprint of the new school um, you can also see the existing vehicle access here on Franklin Road to both infant and junior schools. Uh, and this road here is Grange Lane, which is where the new vehicle access is proposed. Um, so looking at the proposed site plan, you can see a little bit better the, the footprint of the building there and the floor plan as well, um, which includes uh, 10 new teaching classrooms, again, centred around a, a central corridor. Um, uh, there will also be some some new new landscaping and play space here, um, and we can see the little red arrow here demonstrates the new uh, access from Grange Lane that will be put in. Uh, the two blue arrows are the pedestrian entrances, um, and then just down at the bottom here, uh, we've got where the site contractors will enter the site, and then their compound as well. Um, we've also got here to the north the additional parking, so it's going from 34 spaces to 60, um, and again the existing access on, on Franklin Road. Here we've got a perspective view of the, of the new junior school uh, from Grange Lane, which gives a little bit of a demonstration of some of the screening existing on site, um, and also the single storey nature of, of the building. Uh, here we've got the aerial view. So again, this is Grange Lane here. Um, and this is the proposed new school which will be closer to the frontage of that, of that road. Uh, and then just in the background there is the infant school. So here we've got the elevations. So again, this is uh, from the east, so from Grange Lane. So the top there is your existing building. Um, and then the bottom shows the, the footprint of the new with the little red line you can see there is the existing building. Um, and then you've got from the north, uh, which is from Rowner Lane, uh, from the west, and then from the south there. As Chris mentioned with uh, Fryan, very similar in terms of uh, construction, construction and materials, I believe. Um, although I'm sure the applicant can um, can specify it better than I can. Um, so here are just some photos of the existing school. So this is uh, Grange Lane, which at the moment has only got pedestrian access, um, but will obviously have the new vehicle access. Um, and then we've got uh, a view looking uh, southeast from Rowner Lane. So this building here, I think, is the infant school. You've got the existing parking here. And then just in the background there is the junior school that exists as it stands. And the slightly closer up version of the of the school from, from the northern view on Rowner Lane. So in terms of uh, consultations and representations, uh, there was no objections subject to conditions from statutory consultees. Uh, again, no public representations were received. Um, and as you'll see from your update reports, uh, councillors Phil Pot and Burgess have raised concerns uh, over sight lines uh, on the on the new with regards to the new vehicle access on Grange Lane. Um, but hopefully that's up, uh, addressed in the update report. Um, there are uh, also included with the application were the, was the transport statement, which contains this plan here, which just shows you the sight lines uh, from the new vehicle access. Um, so this is, as you can see, Grange Lane here, uh, and then this also just demonstrates the markings that will be uh, laid out and the gated access that's proposed. So key, uh, key issues raised by the proposal are the design, visual impact and massing. Um, so it's a single storey building um, and it will be moved closer to, to Grange Lane um, compared with the existing building. Um, but again, as I say, the applicant is with us today, so we'll hopefully be able to answer any questions you might have with regards to design. Um, impact on playing pictures and other play space. Initially, I think Sport England raised concerns, um, but the applicant has, has specified that uh, contractor compounds will be restored uh, and the loss of, of play space is minimal. Uh, site sustainability. Again, this, this new building will present uh, an improvement to insulation and energy usage. Uh, through its through its design, uh, and finally, highway safety, parking, and access. Um, and as we've discussed, hopefully this is addressed in the in the update reports. 
So our recommendation as officers is that planning permission be granted subject to the conditions set out in Appendix A and in the update report. And that's it from me. <laughs> Oh, you're, I think you're muted again, uh, Chairman. Okay, is that okay? Yeah. Okay, right, then can we move over to the deputy, Michael Bates and Martin Hallam, who will be speaking on behalf of the application. Thank you, Chairman. Members, um, it would just be myself, Martin Hallam. I'm the right. delivery manager. That's okay. all right. Um, it's Martin Hallam, one of the delivery managers in Hampshire County Council's property services team. Um, I'll be, as I say, a single deputation for this particular project. The project lead, um, Kieran Sidwell, is unable to attend, unfortunately, today. Um, by way of introduction, I would make no apology. This uh, deputation will be very much a, a repeat of the last in many respects, and I will focus on the uh, particulars associated with Grange. But um, this is a sister project to Fryan. It's been developed in parallel with the same shared design team. So there will be a lot of commonality, um, but uh, hopefully, um, hopefully from the slides, that's, 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 that, that's self-evident. Um, so the proposals for Grange Junior School have been developed following a detailed structural survey and condition assessment of the existing building. This determined that full refurbishment was not viable and that ongoing maintenance of the building would incur significant costs. Um, providing a new purpose-built school in such a way is considered the best and most economical way to ensure the continued provision of a junior school facility on this site. It must be emphasised that this, unlike Brian, is not a federated school, so the infant school operates independently of the junior school. Hampshire County Council's property services have developed the proposals through consultation with Hampshire County Council's children's services, the senior leadership team at Grange Junior School and the local community. The school have been consulted throughout the design process and their engagement has helped inform the development of the proposals. In terms of site strategy and landscape, as noted in Amy's report, the replacement school is orientated to form a frontage and a better relationship with Grange Lane. It improves access and segregation of vehicles and pedestrians will also help improve safeguarding. In summary, the proposals offer the following advantages. The main entrance is accessed directly off the street, establishing a clear arrangement of public and private areas. To ease pedestrian movement during pickup and drop off, an additional pedestrian entry from Grange Lane is provided, and all entry points will be secured and managed by the school. To reduce congestion, and pro the proposals include an extension to the staff car parking and a new staff vehicular entrance from Grange Lane. <clears throat> this creates a separate entrance and exit and will significantly improve traffic flow, traffic flow through the site and reduce parking demands on the surrounding road network. The improved access will also establish a new service and maintenance lay-by immediately adjacent to the kitchen. Additional cycle and sco scooter storage is also provided in line with Hampshire County Council's on-site um, parking regulations. Regarding the proposed vehicular access from Grange Lane, the proposals have been developed with Hampshire Highways engineers, and this includes two safety audits and a careful assessment of sight lines and vehicle displays, as just illustrated by Amy. <clears throat> the second audit, safety audit, will follow this application, and should this require minor adjustments to the design, these will be incorporated and implemented. It is important to emphasise that the additional entrance and improvements to car parking inside the site are for the, for the benefit of the staff. They aren't for visitors and they aren't for um, parents. Larger vehicles, and you know, such as refuse vehicles and delivery vehicles associated with catering, will continue to access from Franklin Road at agreed times and exit onto Grange Lane. As stressed, the car park is not intended for visitors or parents, this will be managed by the school and we are providing a controlled gate from Grange Lane. 
Um, as stressed, these measures will improve segregation of vehicle and pedestrian movement across the site, and this will help improve the school and the school manage their site more safely and better supports their safeguarding measures and helps promote a healthier school with travel choices in line with Tampshire's travel policy. The scheme also seeks to replace the existing hard play area, which would be built on with a variety of formal sports play and informal breakout areas. These will enhance the school's ability to utilise their landscape more intensively. In terms of the building, the scale and mass and materiality of the building has been carefully considered so as to reflect the prominence of the building on Grange Lane and its, and its important function for the local community, whilst maintaining a sensitivity, sensitivity to both the infant school and the other neighbouring properties. Like Fryan, there will be a high quality brick cladding to ensure that it's robust and, long, and a, and a long-term solution. Each classroom has direct connection to the external landscape with level thresholds, which promote accessibility throughout. There's strategic placement of canopies, again, to shade the glazing and avoid heat gains in the summer. And roof lights have been positioned in the deeper parts of the plan to ensure that there's an emphasis on natural light rather than artificial light. <clears throat> we talked about sustainability in the report. And as emphasised, we have got natural daylighting as the primary source of lighting in the, in the school, but we also rely on LED, and that's uh, light emitting diodes. And the building has been designed with levels of insulation and air tightness to limit the heat loss and reduce the building's energy usage. And there is, again, like Brian, an infrastructure for electric charge points, vehicle charge points. Solar PVs are on the roof which will reduce the energy use of the build. And there's heat recycling units are also installed in the teaching spaces. And these allow for natural ventilation whilst making for the most, most of internal heat gains to deliver appropriate thermal comfort. In conclusion, the proposed building and the site strategy offer a significant upgrade to the existing provision and provides a long-term and sustainable education facility which at Grange Junior School. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Um, thank you for that comprehensive report. I think there are a number of questions which have come up whilst uh, you were speaking. Um, I, I saw Pal Hare had one about disabled parking, but there are others. So, Katie, I didn't take all the, the names. Do we have a list? I think Caroline has. Chairman, first I have Councillor Price and then Councillor Hare. All right, OK. Roger. Um, th thank you, Peter. Um, mine was to do with the uh, PV panels and also the electric points. Um, at the point when I put my hand up, I, the deputy hadn't made the point about those particular issues and therefore they're covered because looking at paragraph 36, in the previous report, it was quite clear what was happening, but that same indication isn't isn't in this report, and that's why I wanted to clarify. He's made the point, so I'm quite happy. Okay, thank you, Roger. Uh, Pal, your point I think was about disabled parking. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, it was about disabled parking. Uh, I understand there's a drop-off and pick-up point. However, for disabled parents. Um, are there enough parking spaces? I've noticed that there's problems in other schools, but being a new school being built and a new layout, would there be enough spaces for, for parents? Chairman, Councillor Powell, thank you. Um, there is uh, an accessible parking space or spaces provided inside the, the, the curtilage of the site, and that would be accessible for those that need it um, through prior arrangement with the school. As I say, there is a controlled access point into the site, um, but that will be made available to those that need um, parking closer to the school. So the answer to your question, Councillor Powell, is yes, there is adequate parking for um, parents who have mobility issues who will be reliant on parking in close proximity to the school within the school grounds. Hopefully that answers your question, Councillor Powell. Thank you, Thank you yes. 
Councillor uh, Mark Cooper, I think you've raised a question. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Very, very briefly, again, the same question as the previous uh, application. Uh, do we understand that the contractor's compound is adequate in size to uh, allow the parking of the workforce and the subcontractors' vans, etc., on site and away from the residential roads? That's the first question. And second question is, can you just clarify, please, uh, the solar panel issue? Um, it's not in the report. I, I, there are, I, do I take it there are solar panels going off the roof as with the previous application? Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cooper. Um, in answer to your first question, a similar arrangement is being made for contractors, a contractor's compound to be made accessible from the south of the site at Grange Road, so it is independent of the current entry. So there's complete segregation between parents, staff and pupils and the contractor. And there will be adequate parking provided within the curtilage of the site for their subcontractors. In, in answer to your second question in terms of solar PV, an equivalent provision, as indicated at Fryan, is, is also provided at Grange. It provides anywhere between 7 and 10 percent of the energy demand from the school. Um, and it is positioned in the same fashion on the lower section of the roof over the classrooms. So it can be maintained safely. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Andrew, uh, Councillor Gibson, Andrew, I think you've got a question too. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, just, just, I've been looking on Google Maps. I haven't, I haven't been down Grange Lane for a long time, but, um, you know, with, their, with parents having to, to drop off in Grange Lane, it, it looks, and, and you're going to have parents approaching from both directions. I'm just wondering whether I know that the, you've got two stages of um, controls with highways over the volume, but I mean that's going to be um, quite an issue in the mornings and the evenings in terms of um, whether there is actually space for parents' cars um, to drop off during those two half-hour periods. I'm just concerned. That's all. Okay. Uh I'm happy to. Do you want to, do you want to uh, respond to that? Um, Chairman, thank you. It's Martin Hallam again, the yep. deputation. Um, I'm happy to respond and, and try and offer some reassurance to Councillor Gibson. Um, a point of emphasis is, is that uh, we're not increasing people numbers on this particular site. Um, Grange Lane last year received some improvements from the highway authority there's some um, replacement curbs and i believe a, a bit of widening um, the entrance that's being formed off the of grange lane into the car park is specifically for staff and those staff should be on site prior to the peak times of drop off and collection so there shouldn't be any conflict between staff vehicle movements and those associated with drop off by at this present moment there is uh, a gate access um, to the site from Grange Lane. There's no vehicle access from Grange Lane. Um, so we're making the site more permeable, if you like. So the, the, the foot traffic into the site, which we're, we're very keen to encourage, should be much more immediate. And one would hope there's a less of a, a reliance on, on vehicle use. Andrew, are you happy with that response? Not really. I just think they're going to have problems, but um, okay. I'm not I'm so unhappy that I'm going to 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 continue with my uh, question. Okay. Right, Do members. Are there any other questions of either of the uh, of the deputy members? Are there any questions you want to raise of the officer, Amy? In that event, uh, does anyone wish to debate the merits of this application? I take from your silence that you don't wish to debate it, and therefore Chairman. we will go to... Ah, right, somebody wants to debate it. Chairman, uh, Councillor Carter, if I, if I may, Chairman. Yes, um, yes. Just at, at, as, as a Gosport councillor, I, 
I think I need to uh, welcome uh, this uh, application. Um, it, as, as everybody has said, it, it mirrors the previous application almost in entirety. Um, but the difference um, is that um, Gosport, um, as members will know, remains one of the, the most deprived areas in the county of Hampshire. So this is a, a very important application for Gosport. Um, the existing school is, I think, over 60 years old or approaching 60 years, um, built in an entirely different time. Um, this application will put the Grange and um, Rayonet um, uh, area, uh, with the school, into uh, in totally modern facilities, um, which is so important for Gospel. So I'm delighted to um, support this application. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Um, I suspect nobody else wants to debate it, so we'll go to the recommendation, which is uh, on page 39 of the report, um, that Planning Commission be granted subject to the conditions listed in Appendix A as amended in the supplemental report that came through last night. Amy, um, Katie, can I ask you to go through the run through the procedure again? I suspect we know what it's going to be. Over to you. Before you do, Chairman, Chairman, before yes. you do, I, I had a, a hand raised. Just very oh, quickly. sorry. Uh, fo following on from Councillor Carter, can I also I have an email uh, came in this morning from Councillor Chegwin, who's one of the other Gosport members, who says he's also very much in favour of the excellent application. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Right. Kate, uh, Katie, over to you. Katie, on mute. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> My button didn't work. Um, yeah, sorry, <laughs> members. It will be the same process as before. Um, obviously, we already have one abstention from Councillor Philpot, who's not participated in this in this item. So. Um, and as James um, reminded before, if you have not been around for the whole of the item, then it would be an abstention as well. So are there any further abstentions for this item? No. OK. Um, are there any members that wish to vote against the item? OK, so I take it that there are therefore 15 members in favour of the application. Agreed. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Katie. So that's another. Well, that, that's two two new schools for the county. That that's wonderful news. Um, so uh, can we? I assume, Katie, we're going to ask for. I hope Councillor Philpott's uh, probably been watching. <clears throat> Perhaps he would wish to rejoin the committee. It's gone really silent. Councillor Philpott has, has I'm now, joined. I'm now back with you. Okay, I'm right. Back with you, Chairman. Okay, Thank you very so, much. so we're now back to agenda item eight, a familiar type of application, and, and it's um, which is back to Chris. Um, we members will remember. I don't know. I, I think I first went to Rose in 2016 when we were looking at this reserve site for as a quarry. Um, we then went again in 2018, and uh, the application finally came this time last year for the quarry at Roshot. Um, and once again, we've got another application to delay because uh, the Section 106 hasn't been completed yet. I know that there have been difficulties with it, and Chris. Uh, you are going to present the item, which is in fact going to be to apply to have it extended to the end of December rather than the end of October, as in the report. Over to you. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, um, this, as, as the Chairman has just explained, this is an application that's been around for some time, and you made your 
original resolution to grant planning commission um, a year ago, last June. Um, the discussions with the applicants on um, completing the Section 106 agreement have progressed, but haven't progressed at the pace we would have um, preferred. I think this is partly due to the fact that the, the landowners are operating without the benefit of having a minerals operator uh, in, in tandem, if you like, with them. So it's something that's a bit new to them uh, in terms of negotiating the detail of an agreement of this nature. So it's taken a bit longer than we would have we would have liked. Um, our officers and and James James Hammond uh, amongst them have, have been doing a really good job in trying to move this forward. Obviously, we've been through a period, or we're going through a period where perhaps um, concluding negotiations and these sort of things is taking a little bit longer than, than it would under normal circumstances. So we haven't been able to, to meet as effectively with the applicant team as we might otherwise be able to. Um, there are one or two issues that still need to be completed. Um, it is possible also <coughs> that some of those issues will need uh, a short report back to committee just to uh, confirm clarify or, or amend some of what has previously been agreed. So what I'm asking for members is that the, the period for completion of the agreement is now extended round to the end of the year, December, end of December 2020, uh, as set out in your update paper, just to give us that time to, to finalise any issues. And if we need to bring it back to you with more detail, uh, then we'll have, a, uh, we'll have time to do that. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chris. Members, do you have any questions uh, to Chris regarding this application? I take your silence, therefore, to mean you don't, which means we can go to the recommendation, which is on page 71. Over to you, Katie. Thank you. Um, so, members, yeah, it'll be the same process again. Um, with the new recommendation as per the update report. Um, so can I check whether there are any members that wish to um, go again um, to abstain, sorry, from uh, from the item? No, um, any against? No, OK, so I take it that it's um, unanimous 16 members, um, members in favour. Great. Great. Brilliant. Great. Thank Great. you. Thanks. Agreed. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, members. Well, that's not bad. We got it was a pretty easy agenda, but we managed to get it through it in a in a in an hour, which is not too bad. Um, we're we're in the fourth year of this term, our last year. Um, a lot of you have been members right throughout this term, and um, I thank you. Once again, it's been a pleasure to work with you and I look forward to working with all of you uh, this year as well. Um, it's been a good committee and I'm really happy to be chairman of it. Um, that, that there will be another virtual meeting, I believe, in July. And I think the only well, the item that I know of that will be coming up will be perhaps a little more, might be more interesting, will be the uh, Alton item regarding which came up this time last year, which will be interesting. So look forward to seeing you all in one form or another um, in July. Thank you all for attending and I'll close the meeting. Thank you, Chair. Cheers. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, members. Hi, all. Hi, all. Hi, all.